this is actually the first like full length, like actual real E3 talk that I've ever given. Um, I've been on the E3 team for like a year and a half. I've never really volunteered for this. Uh, I'm a senior biology and religious studies major. I usually sit back there where Emily's sitting now, run the little computer so you can know the results. And I'm really, really missing my corner right now in front of the lights and all of you. I might start sweating and my heart rate's just like ridiculous right now. But we're here. Hi. Welcome back. Happy Easter. Um, last week, Daniela talked about getting started and the tools for getting started. She talked about the sacraments of initiation, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you're really like, cool, like I could point to them. So imagine them right here and right here. There's seven of them. Um, but this week, we're talking about gaining energy for that journey. So like, imagine like you're driving in your car, you're on Highway 70, you hit the gas, and I've been told it's called a tachometer, the thing that measures your RPMs, like shoots up to like five or six, and then eventually when you get into gear, it like goes down, down to a two or three. That's basically what we're talking about this week. Like not cars, but I don't, I don't know anything about cars. But about getting up to that five or six, getting that energy that you need to move. But whereas like in a car you want to, to go back down to a two or three so you don't like ruin your car. For, for us, for our faith, we want it to stay at a five or six. So how do, we, how do we get that energy in the first place? Well, as we're doing this series, we're talking about the sacraments, right? So let's start there, right? Sounds like a good place to start. Baptism is usually the first, it should be the first sacrament that everyone gets. Um, you get a little bit there, right? Because you're like a baby, babies, you don't want them to have too much energy. Unless you're an adult, then I guess you get a lot of energy. <laughs> oh well. Um, and then later we receive the Eucharist, where we get like this huge abundance of energy, um, but we don't always like use all that energy or realize all the energy that we get from the Eucharist. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then you have reconciliation. Which, going back to the car metaphor, like imagine like you're driving in your truck and there's a whole bunch of junk in your truck, and then you take all the junk out of the truck, and the car moves a little bit lighter, it moves a little bit faster, it doesn't take as long to get up to speed. That's like what reconciliation does for us. You can use that energy a little bit more efficiently. And then you have confirmation. And in confirmation, you get these gifts of the Holy Spirit that give you enough energy to eventually like find your vocation, right? Because like you become an adult and then eventually like you figure out what God wants you to do. Right? That's how it goes. So that doesn't mean like that's not like discounting confirmation. Like after like you get married, your confirmation doesn't matter. Like it does, but the confirmation is what gets you to that, to figuring out that you want to get married or you want to take a religious order or whatever. So the bulk of my convert, my talk tonight is about confirmation, okay? Mostly because I don't remember my confirmation. Like, nope, out of my mind, I have no idea. I can like tell you the day, it was May 4th, 2006. I was 14. I remember the dress that I wore, it was black with like pink like trim with like flowers on it. It's very girly. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I know that my family was there. I remember the gifts that I got from them. I got a gospel album, so amen. <laughs> I remember that the recessional song was Go Make a Difference, which is by far and away my least favorite church song in the world. <laughs> Number one, because it's so cheesy. Like, go make a difference. I don't tell them what to do. And number two, <laughs> number two, like they just overplayed it. They played it at every single confirmation thing. Like, you know what song I'm talking about just by saying, go make a difference. Anyway, um, I remember that we had to take uh, these like 
I went to a Catholic grade school and we had to take these tests in religion class in order to get confirmed. We had to get 100% on that test. And you were like, nope, you can't, you can't get confirmed. Like you can tell me if I can get confirmed or not. I had to take the test twice. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember the moment of my confirmation. I don't remember walking up to the priest. I don't remember the priest saying, he's a Monsignor, I know that, but because I was really jealous of the next class at the Archbishop. But we had a Monsignor, don't remember his name, but I don't remember like him like walking up to him and saying, Elizabeth, my confirmation name, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Could not tell you in detail about my confirmation, that moment that I was confirmed. However, I can tell you in very big detail about the first time that my faith was confirmed for the first time. My confirmation moment, my little seat confirmation. It was at the Steubenville Youth Conference, the summer of 2007, so a year after my confirmation. It was a Saturday night ad adoration. I was sitting about 20 rows back from the stage on the floor. And if any of you have ever been to a Steubenville conference, like Saturday night conference, Saturday night adoration is just like, whoa. You guys are like taken with the spirit, and I don't know what's going on. At least that was how I was my first time. So what they do is they take the Blessed Sacrament, and they walk it around the floor, and they walk it up to the upper decks, and people are like sobbing and snots running down their face, and it's like, what is going on here? Like, people are like writhing in the spirit. Or there was this one girl that was like somewhere behind me that was like maniacally laughing the whole time. <laughs> it was just very disconcerting when you can't really put a face to it because you have people that are behind you. So I was like out of my element here. Like I, I was like, what in the world? These people are crazy. And at the same time, I was like, I want to feel something. Like. I want what they have, maybe like a little bit. <laughs> but I want, I want that surety, that passion, that certainty that they have. And so I was kneeling on the ground, two hours into an adoration, and the Blessed Sacrament passed, like, I was maybe like right here, there was like a row in the Blessed Sacrament. Blessed Sacrament passed, like, and right about here, Everything went quiet. The band was still playing, people were still crying and wailing, and someone was laughing. <laughs> but everything was silent. In that moment, my confirmation moment, I was more sure, that's bad English, I was so sure of God's existence, Christ's existence. I was completely certain of his existence, his love for me, and that he was greater than anything I could ever experience. In that moment, I had more energy, more certainty of the journey than I'd ever had before. I wanted to know more, understand more. I wanted to make the right decisions. I wanted to be pious. And I wanted that energy to stay with me every single day. I wanted that moment, that energy, that certainty with me every moment of every day. But it did. Eventually, I had to leave the retreat. Only last three days. I had to leave this, this situation where I was so positive of Christ, of God. And yeah, it stays with you for a little while, but eventually it fades away. Eventually, you start going to Mass, and it's just like you're going through the motions. And not only was I losing that energy that I had, I was losing even more, because I was waiting for this huge moment to happen, right? Where you're, where you're sitting in normal adoration, and just waiting for God to like knock you out, and be like, hey, I'm here. But that doesn't happen every day. And so I was getting really drained. Right? I was doing everything right and not having any more little C confirmation moments in return. I would go on retreats and pray for that surety, that energy that I had before. 
and I would leave and feel refreshed, but it was different. I wasn't certain. I didn't have that energy that I had. But I came to expect these huge moments of faith where there's 5,000 people in the room and I can't hear one of them because I'm having a moment. And so all of the small little moments that you see God in like the little things became inconsequential. And I think that's pretty common. I think all of you probably understand what I'm talking about if you haven't felt it yourself. Um, and it's not just teenagers. I was 15. Like It's not just 15 year olds that have this. Like college students, adults, everyone has like this expectation um, of Pentecost rather than Jesus asking you to come to breakfast. Like, can you imagine for a second if you went to Mass every Sunday and when you approached the Eucharist, you had the same wonder and awe that you did in those huge confirmation moments where people were just like crying or like stood speechless in front of, in front of God. And not only that, you get to receive him, that would be very different if that was how we approach the Eucharist. We expect these huge moments and we take for granted and miss some of the smaller ones, the everyday ones, the every Sunday ones. And so we don't gain the energy that we need to keep going because we keep expecting these huge bursts and then go back down to like a two. So at confirmation, you are sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you received at baptism. That means that you, you get the gift, you get the Holy Spirit within you, sealed within you, so it becomes a part of you, and you bear the mark of the Holy Spirit. It means that we are capable now, as adults, to recognize Christ in the mundane, in the everyday <laughs> Because we are gifted with the ability to do so, and those gifts are now a part of us, a confirmation of the Holy Spirit becomes a ah, I'm repeating myself, darn it. Uh, it was a part of baptism, we are talking about baptism. So they give you they, these gifts of the Holy Spirit give you the strength to become an adult in the church. Right? That's what they tell you. That you are now an adult, you've made this decision, this is now your faith. Now I don't know much about being an adult. Um, I'm 22, but I'm pretty sure that I'm closer to a child than any sort of adult. Um, but I think that being an adult in the church means that we can no longer rely on others for our spiritual growth. We must seek it for ourselves. We must take charge of that and say, I want that. But more than that, I think it means that we are now able, in the same way that the disciples did at Pentecost, to go out and spread Christ to all the nation, right? That's what Jesus tells us to do. We're now able to be a source of spiritual growth to others because we are strengthened by the gifts that are a part of us. We already said that. Our confirmation, we are Darn it. I see what you said about repeating myself. So, in the Acts of the Apostles, Luke, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles, writes about the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost. He says, yes, when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speaking, or to speak in different, in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. So there are two things here that I want to point out real quick. Number one, they were all in one place together. And number two, it was the Spirit that enabled them to proclaim. These two things are important to remember because number one, they haven't left the room that they were in, the upper room that they were in. We would not be here today right? They wouldn't have spread God's word. They would have stayed together. 
according to a little Holy Spiritness. Number two, it is only with the Holy Spirit's help that the apostles were able to fulfill the commission given by Jesus in Mark and Matthew's gospel. Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Okay. There you go. So that, that. It's only with the Holy Spirit's help that they could do that. So similarly, we need the Holy Spirit's gift to get us out of our upper rooms and proclaim Christ's word to all the nations. Now, I can't speak for everyone. I don't want to assume anything. But my confirmation, my big C confirmation, didn't include tongues of fire. <laughs> I definitely would have remembered that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I, uh, it didn't have any speaking of tongues. Like, I didn't learn how to speak another language at my confirmation. Because freshman Spanish would have been a lot easier if I had. <laughs> but while my confirmation is different than what the apostles experienced, in a lot of ways, the two are very similar to one another. When the apostles received the Holy Spirit, they gave the absolute certainty that God was always going to be with them, even if Jesus wasn't physically present with them. In confirmation moments, big C and small c, we get that same certainty which gives us the energy to keep going until we reach another confirmation moment. I'm only now, in my 22-year-old self, eight years after my big C confirmation, and my seven years after my little C confirmation, I'm only now recognizing the call to go out into the world and proclaim the gospel. But more than that, I'm only now recognizing that I even have the ability or the energy to do I'm not a great conversationalist. I repeat myself a lot. I don't know if you got that. I don't find talking to people easy. This is basically my nightmare. <laughs> um, so proclaiming anything is a really big stretch for me. It takes a lot out of me. Uh, but being here, praising with you, being able to talk to you, um, are little C confirmation me. I gain the energy to be up here to proclaim from recognizing the little C of dancing in the back to burning in my soul before you guys all walked in here. Mm -hmm. Or the little C moments of realizing that it was a really nice day today. That we've had a great week. That Easter was Sunday. Those are all little C moments, right? Recognizing that God is in each and every thing. It gives me the energy to be here because I really want to leave right now. <laughs> okay, These little C moments have given me this slow burning God high rather than this huge burst of God high that would keep me going on my journey until I find my vocation in life, whatever I'm meant to do. Because once I get there, I'm doing what God made me to do. So everything should be like a constant God, right? My confirmation in the gifts of the Holy Spirit have given me the energy, the determination, the certainty that I need to leave my upper room. It's like if the apostles, after receiving the Holy Spirit, had just decided to stay together in their upper room and not leave. That, we don't want that. But the Holy Spirit gave them the energy they needed to accept their commission, and they went out. I was sealed with the same gifts. All the confirmed are sealed with the same gifts. But often times, I feel as if I'm waiting for some huge, big C confirmation moment to get me out of the upper room. We're not called to stay in one place and leave only when we impulsively decide to volunteer to give that would be a waste of the gift sealed within me. That would be a waste of the small confirmation moments that happen every day. And it wouldn't help us gain the energy that we need to answer our commission, our calling, our vocation. By our confirmation, we are called to spread the word of God. In the catechism, it says, For by the sacrament of confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are enriched with the special strength of the Holy Spirit. 
Hence they are, as true witnesses of Christ, more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. By our confirmation, we have been commissioned, just like the apostles have, to go out to the nations. And our confirmation seals within us the gift that will help us recognize those little C confirmation moments that will give us the long-lasting, that slow-burning energy we need to keep going. But it must start with the daily embracing of this commission, of our confirmation and the gifts that we have received, so that we can daily recognize God's presence in our lives. I get this ridiculous image, like, do you guys know Jessica did this daily affirmation of that? I love my mom, I love my dad. Similarly, like, I get this, like, idea that somebody like jumps out of bed in the morning, runs over the mirror and says, I have wisdom, understanding, right judgment, fortitude, knowledge, piety, <laughs> and fear of the Lord. Okay? And I can do anything. <laughs> Obviously, that probably doesn't happen. It doesn't happen to me. Uh, and just saying the words isn't enough. Every time we receive communion, we should be able to stand in wonder of God's presence. This must be a constant thing. Every moment I approach God waiting for him to make the first move, to knock me out with his grace, I miss the things that are happening behind me while I'm waiting. So, starting this June, I will be the campus ministry intern what Emily does now. Which means that on a daily basis, I will literally have to leave the upper apartment to minister <laughs> to the people. <laughs> and I don't imagine this will be easy, because nothing in life is easy, right? And especially when I have a really hard time talking to people. I'm sure that some days will be harder than others, but by making an effort, to embrace my confirmation, my big C confirmation and my little C confirmations, my gifts and my commission, my calling to spread the word of God. I might just gain the energy that I need to actually go and do it. That's all I got. Okay.